Ooh. Oof. Does that look painful? Have you seen someone who has done that? I have. Um, I probably have done it too. And sometimes in extreme cases, you can really get hurt. My name is Dustin. I'm the head coach of Superfit Fitness. And today we are going to talk about the anterior pelvic tilt. It's definitely something that I see most of my new clients uh, struggle with when we first start working out, which leads to long-term lower back pain. The pelvic toe itself can create a nice illusion of a nice S-curve on the human body. Like most of the Instagram fitness models with nice bum, nice curve, you know what I'm talking about, all right? How many pelvic toes do we actually have as a human body? Ships. Not one, championships. Not two. LeBron, tell us about that. Not two, not three. Three, all right, we only have three. Three, that's all we got. Uh, the first one I wanna talk about is our main event, the APT, anterior pelvic tilt. It's when you're tilting your butt upwards, backwards, creating that little nice arch. It can create a nice curve on your bum. And to some degrees, like Miss Kim K, she was able to tilt so much and balance a glass of water on top. That is very impressive. Imagine the water bottle is like your pelvic tilt. As I'm entering pelvic tilting, the water bottle is kind of falling forward. The water is kind of flowing and just leaking out from the front. This is mainly caused by the shortening of your hip flexor, prolonged period of sitting, lack of physical activities, poor postures, and weak posterior chain. Now, the second one we're talking about is the posterior pelvic tilt, which is the complete opposite of APT. It's not mainly talked about compared to the APT, but it can still be very serious and cause long-term problems for your health as well. Now back to the water bottle analogy, it's the complete opposite, like I said. Now the water is gonna be leaking out from the back. And this is mainly caused by slouching while you're sitting and walking and very tight hamstring muscles as well. Therefore it could cause a lot of people to hunch while they walk sit and do everything actually in the long term you can put so much pressure on your lower back and create chronic lower back pain as well now the third one we want to talk about which is the one we are always trying to achieve and practice and master which is neutral product tilt you want to think standing as tall as you can lengthen the spine standing up tall and tilting that pelvic just right so there is no water leaking forward and backwards and it's just leveled perfectly. So how do we fix this? First you wanna learn is actually how to pelvic tilt. Now let's try the classic cats and cow pose for yoga. I want you to get on the floor, your hands, just your shoulder width apart, your knees and your feet shoulder width apart. Rock your lower back down to the ground as much as you can as you inhale. Now as you exhale, I want you to posterior tilt up up, 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 up as much as you can to a point that you're gonna feel like your core is on fire. You're using your core to contract, contract, and contract. Your goal is to create the two complete opposite range of motions while you're doing your anterior pelvic tilt and posterior pelvic tilt. Do this six to eight times per set. Keep practicing that so you can control your pelvic now you know how to pelvic tilt, now let's groove that pattern and strengthen your core. One of the common exercises I help my clients with is the dead bug. Uh, there are different levels and progressions you can try out. First, lie on back. I want your feet up 90 degrees, hands up. For people who have a lot of anterior pelvic tilt, you'll probably notice there's a huge gap between your lower back and the floor. See if you can apply what you learn from the cats and cow and flatten the ground, minimize and completely eliminate the gap from your lower back and the floor. If you have trouble doing so while keeping your knees straight, put your feet down and I'll try it again. All right, it's kind of just tucking your butt upwards. It sounds kind of weird, but just tuck it in. Once you can do that, get your legs back on again. While keeping that position, I want you to tap your heel onto the ground very gentle. Once you get good at that, you should start to feel a lot of core being utilized while doing this. Second, you can try grabbing a resistance band. Anchor to the side, 
put it underneath your lower back, tuck it down, make sure it's secure on the floor and it's not getting out. Now do the same thing, heel tap, heel tap, heel tap. The band itself is gonna keep you accountable for controlling your core and engaging your core throughout the entire movement. I made a full Instagram post about deadlift variations. Definitely add me on Instagram, check those out and see how far you can progress down the line. Next, I want you to start to groove that hinge pattern of yours. Now, what is a hinge pattern? Hinge pattern is the most crucial part you need to know how to deadlift properly. Uh, you'll need to learn how to hinge a bit for a squat. If you have trouble squatting, definitely check out my previous video, three tips to instantly help you improve your squat. People tend to mess up on this part very easily. You learn how to fix your lower back by learning how to hinge properly, by learning how to deadlift properly. Well, hold on, hold on. Dust, I, I, can't, I can't deadlift, my back hurts. <laughs> exactly, that's why you need to deadlift. That's why you have to learn how to hinge properly. That's how you properly fix your back, by learning how to strengthen your core, by learning how to properly pelvic tilt. So grab a stick, put the stick behind your back, three points of contact, your back of the head, mid back, and your butt. For people with a lot of anterior pelvic tilt, you probably see the gap between the stick and your lower back. Now apply what you learn with the cats and cow and the dead buck posterior tilt a little bit, see if you can minimize that gap as much as possible while keeping contact with your head and your mid back. Once you have to do so, you should feel your core being fired on and turned on automatically. Next, you wanna hinge forward with constant body tension. You wanna move at one unit. As you hinge forward, you should feel your hamstring lengthening have a nice stretch as you come back up. I want you to come up as one unit as well, keeping the three points of contact on the stick and minimizing that gap between your lower back and the stick as well. If you feel your core being engaged while doing this motion throughout the entire time, you're doing it right. Some of the common things I've seen people do wrong are not engaging your core as you come up, as well as having too much weight on your heel or the ball of your foot, therefore you lose a lot of balance. You can try this. Keep your calves against a platform, a couch, a chair of some sort, keeping your legs stiff and not letting your knees move away or push back against the platform while you're hinging can help you improve that hinge pattern over time. Now you know how to pelvic tilt. Now you know how to hinge. The last thing to do is put everything into real life and practice the movements. Learn to pick up things from the ground with a hinge. Pick up things with your legs, keeping neutral spine, engaging your core while doing everything. I know it sounds very silly at the moment, it looks very silly, but trust me, down the road, you'll thank me and say, damn, damn my back is perfectly fine. My goal is to help you to be pain-free 10 years, 15 years down the road. Move well, feel well, and be strong. Bonus tips. That's right. All right, we can't finish the video without any bonus tips. I want you to try these few exercises at home to help you strengthen your glutes, strengthen your posterior chain, as well as learn how to have a strong hip extension. The first one I want to try is the banded hip extension. Anchor it on the ground of some sort. Get a heavy band, kneel down, and stand tall on your knee. Now what you're looking for right now is to have full hip extension, glutes engaged, quads engaged, and your core is engaged. Lengthening your hip flexor. You are contracting your glutes. Next, hip thrusters. Right? Glutes is very important for all athletes, for everybody. As you're doing this, I want you to drive your heels into the ground, thrust your glutes up and squeeze as hard as you can on the very top while maintaining neutral spine and core is engaged throughout the entire time. Last but not least, the wall sit. What does that do to the core? Now I want you to sit on the wall, maybe have some weights or not to start off. Knees gonna be your shoulder width apart and create a nice 90 degrees from the side profile. As you're sitting, think about is there any gap between your back and the wall? If so, pelvic tilt and get that lower back stuck to the wall. 
and engage your core and think about core and dig deeper. Challenge yourself for 40 seconds, 60 seconds, of progressive overload. Get your legs stronger, get your core stronger, control your pelvic tilt at will, and you'll be on the right track to be pain free. I hope you guys like this video. If you do, please like the video and share with your friends who are having trouble with anterior pelvic tilt or posterior pelvic tilt. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for more contents like this. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, peace.